Well, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Marthe Mola and uh, I work here at Alliance Dental Specialists as the um, Practice Development Coordinator. Um, one of my jobs is uh, organizing great events such as this one. Uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, this evening we have two panelists with us. We have Dr. Yosef Namias. He's the founder of Alliance Dental Specialists. He's been, um, he's been in practice here in Oakville for almost 40 years. Um, and, uh, and it's a lot of fun working with them here. Uh, and our guest speaker is Lisa Philp. Uh, Dr. Nemeas will be introducing Lisa. Uh, now, uh, if you have any questions throughout our uh, webinar today, uh, please type it in the question and answer box and we'll try to answer them. Um, I'll pass you over to Dr. Yosef Namias. Well, Martha, thank you so much. And I'd like to thank uh, Martha for organizing this event. It's, uh, it's been uh, a lot of work um, getting to learn how to use the technology and uh, it's quite different to what we're used to doing in the past uh, and uh, Martha has put a lot of time and effort in making sure that you all get an invitation and that you get access to this amazing event that we have prepared for you for, for this evening. So let's talk to you a little bit about uh, who we are. We are our endodontic practice in Oakville, Ontario. Uh, I've been uh, practicing endo since uh, 1983. I've uh, been um, graduated from dental school in 1980. So uh, last year in 2020, we were going to have our uh, big 40 year reunion. Uh, I originally went to dental school in Mexico, in Mexico City, but unfortunately because of COVID, we couldn't have our reunion. Uh, however, we're probably looking forward to maybe doing it in 2022, provided that that things uh, keep getting uh, better and the numbers go down. So our practice is, is very modern. Uh, uh, we, are, uh, we moved to our newer location about 10 years ago. We have four operatories, two endodontists. Um, this is our uh, amazing uh, uh, team. Uh, there is me there, uh, my picture uh, when I was a little younger, and then we have Dr. Al Kayali uh, to my right or to my left, and then you can see our uh, valuable staff members, starting with uh, uh, Ariel, who is our office uh, manager. Then we have Shailene, who is uh, uh, front desk; she answers your calls. Next, we have Martha, who introduces herself who also answers the calls. Uh, then we have Susan, our lead uh, team, uh, team lead assistant. Uh, we have Barbie or Barbara, Tony, Viviana, and Danielle. So this uh, team is a very strong team. Some of our members have been working with us for over 15 years, and uh, they make sure that uh, they make this pl uh, experience for your patients to be a pleasant one. Um, we also have um, in 2019, we won the Top Choice Award as uh, the best uh, dental clinic uh, in, in Ontario, and we're very proud of it. Um, here are some of the services that we provide your patients with. Uh, we provide uh, moderate oral sedation, and we can also provide IV sedation to your patients. Uh, emergency services are available, non-surgical endodontic treatment, obviously, endodontic retreatment, root end apical surgery, vital uh, pulp therapy, root amputations, intentional replantation in some cases, and treatment of endoperial lesions. We have additional services. We, um, uh, our operatories are set up in such a way that if patients want to watch Netflix, we have iPads, uh, we don't have the big screens on top of the ceiling because since I work under a microscope, the microscope goes on top of the patients. Therefore, they cannot see the screen if you have it on the ceiling. But we have iPads and um, hook up to Netflix so the patients can 
can watch programs, uh, their, best, their favorite television series. Uh, we also have people here that speak different languages. So if your patients speak French, Spanish, Portuguese, Hebrew, Polish, or Arabic, we have somebody here that will be able to translate for your patients. Uh, we host other events other than this Zoom event, and we are looking forward to hopefully soon uh, have you uh, over in our office where we host events in the office, outside of the office, and all over. Um, we do uh, hands-on courses too. I, I give hands-on courses two, three times a year. And now with COVID, we cannot do that, but we're looking forward hopefully next year. I doubt that it's gonna be 2021, where we're gonna have again events and we're not gonna have to wear masks and we can um, uh, see you in person rather than looking at a computer screen. So um, uh, if you want to get any information regarding our events, please make sure that you give us your email address. Make sure you send it to Martha or to myself. Uh, Martha, at the end of the presentation, will give you our email address. And that way you can uh, send us emails if you, if you want to ask questions or if you want to be part of our mailing list. Uh, we, um, uh, the question is, uh, why should you trust us with your valuable patients? And the answer is, uh, firstly, we will contact your patients right away once we hear from you. Now with COVID, our protocols have changed a little bit, whereas before you would refer the patient and the patient would come for a consultation. Nowadays, what we do is we request for you to send us uh, an, uh, a, a, an x-ray if you're digital and brief description of what the patient needs. At that point in time, uh, where uh, front desk people will contact your patients right away, go over a few questions, and then um, they will ask me or Dr. al Kayali uh, what is the next step. And this way, in a lot of cases, we can bring the patient straight for treatment, preventing them from uh, coming twice for a consultation and then treatment. So we're seeing a lot of patients now where we'll be able to provide treatment opportunities in, in, in the one session uh, due to COVID. Uh, we don't have anybody waiting in our waiting room. Very seldom we have people, maybe if, if a parent is accompanying their child, then they'll sit in the waiting room. But we have a, a certain amount of protocols in order to prevent anybody from uh, uh, getting exposed to, to COVID. We also have over 50 years of experience between myself and Dr. Al Kayali. It's probably more than 50 years because I myself have 40 years of experience in the dental business, whereas Dr. Al Kayali has probably about 20 years of experience. Um, we have super friendly staff members who are extremely nice, very caring, very uh, empathetic, and, and very compassionate. If you go into our reviews and, and rate my MD, you're gonna see uh, the names of our uh, valuable assistants who make the people perceived as an unpleasant experience into a very pleasant experience. Our modern office is state of the art. We have everything here. We work under microscopes, etc., etc. Our dedication to excellent, that's why we give courses and, and we stay up to date with all the technology. We are very dedicated to teaching and learning. We tend to publish articles pretty much on a yearly basis and oral health and other magazines and other journals. We lecture uh, extensively internationally and locally. We stay in touch with your office for a seamless treatment planning. In fact, we wanna make sure that we become an extension of your office, that when you are referring a patient to our office, your staff member who's referring the patient uh, knows our staff members, and that way it seems like a seamless um, uh, referral. Uh, that way uh, your, your, your uh, front desk knows our front desk, and uh, the only thing is that they have to go to a different location, but we want to try to make sure that we're an extension to your office. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Raid MDS and Google and all the social media available. This is Martha's job also to make sure that um, 
we we have pictures on Instagram and our Facebook page is updated and most of you also if you uh, later on want to watch this presentation we will most likely put a link on Facebook and uh, on a YouTube channel uh, I wanted to show this because this is me uh, this guy with the long hair in uh -huh. 1976 or 1977 I started dental school in 1976 by 1977 in, in Mexico you start working on patients first semester and you start drilling into people's teeth in the second semester or the third semester so here you see me I probably was only about 19 years old very long hair first patient that I'm going to be drilling into her tooth the lady on my right or my, sorry on my left is and my assistant is one of my classmates so what they used to do is we would pair up with another one of our um, classmates and half the time I would be assisting half the time she would be assisted so you became pretty pretty proficient at 400 dentistry even in dental school so you had to have the right person to be matched up with uh, otherwise it would be a disaster so this is me 1976 1977 long hair I, I, I am wearing a shirt it looks like I'm not but you can see my sleeves I am wearing a shirt and this is us now under microscopes things have changed quite dramatically the hair is still a little long especially now with COVID I haven't had a chance to go to to the barber in a while but uh, uh, and, and, and my hair has turned gray but but technology has advanced dramatically uh, I want to show a cool case because I think it's important that we show sometimes what we do here at the office and uh, this is a cool case that came referred to our office tooth number two six this patient was having acute periapical uh, periodontitis and acute pulpitis so she was very sensitive to hot cold and bite on tooth number two six and she was scheduled to do a root canal treatment which we did and most of our treatments are done in one appointment very seldom unless the tooth is very infected and we cannot dry the canals we'll do the treatment in two appointments so this is a cool case because number one we found four canals typically upper maxillary upper maxillary first molars and because we work under a microscope we will find a fourth canal an mb2 in over 91 to 92 percent of the cases so if you start a maxillary first molar and you only find three canals be aware of the fact that chances are there is a fourth canal so these are cases that sometimes can be quite challenging now look at the curvatures of the roots especially the distal buccal root on this angle x-ray is over 90 degrees the technology that we have available to us night eye without memory and the experience that we have allow us to treat challenging cases like this one so I just wanted to share that with you because I thought this was a cool case that demonstrates our ability to find the MB2 and also the ability of us being able to get around a curve like that without breaking instruments this is what I teach I teach when I give my lectures I teach how to uh, do root canals and how to clean and shape to and in a, such a way to prevent breakage of instruments so that's the case for tonight um, I also want to um, tell you about our next um, lecture or webinar because now they're all going to be webinars and this is going to take place on April 29th and is with Dr. Lanka, Jose Lanka and the topic is um, quite interesting it's about the implications in dentistry regarding cannabis now that you know you can buy legally and do cannabis legally uh, a, lo a lot of things have changed and I think as dentists and as dental practices we need to see and learn how to deal with this new um, new situation here that patients or you know a lot of patients especially uh, those of you who are dealing with younger patients that may be influenced or under the influence of cannabis so please make sure that uh, you uh, make a note in your calendar it's on Thursday April the 29th 
and Martha is going to be sending you an invitation and you'll have plenty of time to respond. Okay, I think I took a lot of time, a lot of your valuable time. I'd like to introduce uh, uh, Lisa Philp. Who doesn't know of Lisa Philp? I mean, <laughs> she is, um, wow, I mean, when it comes to uh, patient satisfaction and marketing, um, you know, I've, I've, I've seen her at the ODA meetings. I think I've watched one of her webinars not too long ago. Uh, she is just a, 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 a leader in this industry, and we're very, very excited, and we're very thankful, Lisa, that you accepted our invitation. So um, I, I don't need to read your, 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 your tremendous <laughs> CV, <laughs> because everybody knows who you are, and we're very excited, and I just personally wanted to thank you for making the time to, to, to speak to our referral and non-referral base and uh, take it away, go ahead, share your screen. And uh, again, thank you all of you for um, attending this evening and uh, uh, love to speak with you in the future. So go ahead, Lisa. Oh, thank you for that warm introduction. And there's probably someone that doesn't know me because before COVID I had brown hair. <laughs> now, <laughs> I call this COVID hair because there's not a lot of my hair guy doesn't work very often. So, uh, but it's all, you know, it's, it's a privilege to work in dentistry. I have a deep passion for dentistry and helping dentistry see that not only the joy and the fulfillment that can happen, but also how to be a critical member of healthcare. And when we, when we originally scheduled this program, you know, we talked patient experience, patient satisfaction, all the different things that are real. What does the patient perceive of us and what do they expect? And I'm going to say that it's not changed. It's just gotten a little bit more demanding and they have realized a lot of different things about us uh, in dentistry from us being uh, shut down and from us being considered by political environments and governments putting pressure on our regulatory bodies that we are not essential, especially looking at hygiene, I'm a hygienist by education. It's been 30 years this year. Um, I've been a, a privileged to be the leader of Transitions Group for 20 years in building thousands of dental practices in Canada and the United States. So it's a big shift. COVID's changed every one of us in every single way. I think I would, I tell all of my friends, I'd rather be in a dental practice than a grocery store right now. Dentistry is one of the safest places to be, but I think back over three decades of dentistry, we've been through tough times before. We've been through tough times before and we've made it. And you know, it's interesting, the tough times we've been through before are a lot to do with contagious infections. I think I was in hygiene school when the case with HIV came out and gloves and H1N1, hepatitis, I mean, 2008 and the real estate crash and you know, showing that dentistry is recession proof. We truly are. I'm so proud of dentistry in Canada. I work just in Canada now, um, as much as I don't get on planes and, and speak every Friday and Saturday, um, I'm kind of missing that. So sitting in Zoom and you only see me from the waist up. I do wear pants though. I'm not like the commercial where Zoom people don't wear anything below their waist, but I just want to, you know, we've been through tough times before and we've made it back. We've, we've made it back better actually. And I think the being, you know, dentistry being knocked down, the horrification, I remember getting the call in Mexico. I, w I left for March spring break last year. And I remember my family saying, are you really going? I said, yeah, you know what? My kids have disinfectants. They'll wipe off the airline tables. Surely Mexico where everyone's there having fun, this virus can't last. Like it'll be okay. And they said, well, what about dentistry? I said, dentistry is ready for any contagious virus. They've already been isolating themselves. We've been wearing the gloves. We've been wearing the mask. We look at everyone as a possible contagious uh, infection that we could catch. And our infection control is impeccable, our eye packs, all those different things. But it was pretty horrifying to land and be told the entire profession of dentistry wasn't working. <laughs> was shut down. And I probably in my half a century on earth would be one of the top three most shocking 
uh, pieces of news that I've ever gotten. And, you know, I, I started reading and how they're saying we're not essential and we're elective services and the aerosols uh, aren't necessary. And I have believed for decades that dentistry is a very critical part of healthcare. So I think there's a lot of good things that have come out of COVID, but I think dentistry proving that it's resilient is something we've done before, but now we combine that with patients not listening to we're non-essential, we're non-elective. I think our transitions office in Burlington being a dental coaching company got as many calls asking what's going on. I have a toothache. Does Lisa know someone that stayed open? Is there anywhere I can go? And patients missed us. Patients realized, you know what? When you're not comfortable in your oral health, bad things happen with pain, discomfort, and different things. And I think I, I'm I'm happy to say that I doubt nothing. I doubt anything will ever shut us down again, based on government pressure on our regulatory bodies. You know, are things a little different in how we manage infectious diseases? You know, when someone said to me, "Is the dental practice safe?" I said, "You know." they're treating everyone like they have COVID anyways. The, the way their PPE, I mean, I know there was a lot, like when we went through this, this is by the way, 300 day 312, I think, COVID day 312, after New Year's, I stopped counting, um, where we've gone through all these different stages from shutdown, isolation, you know, you take a, a highly a highly gifted intellectual profession and you tell them they have to stay at home they cannot leave and they cannot go to their place of employment. And they know there's people that need them. That was really hard. Then it went through, this is like the stages of this. And this was at day 200. Um, we did over 72 town halls. We did over 480 um, uh, pieces to help dentistry get through this. And it's been fascinating. Um, it's been fascinating. We had 900 to a thousand people Canadian dental professionals because something happened in cabin fever where we had to reevaluate and we had to as lead not only as leaders but also as managers and as influencers we had to figure out how are we going to get back how are we going to return to dentistry and the preparation and the work that went into I mean the the construction, the equipment, the fogging machines, the chemicals, the disinfectants, the N95s, the fit tests. If I never hear the word fit test again, I'll be happy. Um, not every mask is equal in a fit test. So I think we've all lived it. We're all gonna be better for it. And I will tell you, the dental professionals that didn't sit back and, and become a victim, uh, watch every Netflix series, uh, you know, when Netflix triples their prices, that there's a serious uh, demand issue. But I think returning to dentistry was tough in a few ways. For those that prepared, it wasn't necessarily that it was tough, but we had some, we had to build, rebuild patient confidence because they were watching the death meter and the death counter every night on the news, hearing about how dentistry is elective. And that not only was that hard to hear, but as you know, the media has strong impact on the basic population. And returning to dentistry, one of our biggest one of our biggest issues was so many dental auxiliary not returning to the profession, and being afraid and scared. You know, I'm pregnant. I don't want to come back into the dental office. And I think the return to dentistry was a bit of a rocky road. Um, and each province, that's the challenge. There was all different rules going on in each province. So different provinces were shut down for different amounts of time. But I think, you know, you think about the general dental practice, you know, I think, doctor, you said you shut down maybe for a week or two because root canals will never be called elective. <laughs> that's the good news. Where in general dentistry, the oral health care services of perio patients, of gum disease patients was being completely pushed aside. The return to dentistry was a big shift, but then also finding auxiliaries that we could get them through their fear and they would feel safe because if they felt safe, then we could build back patient confidence. And then we got to rebuild. 
and rebuild. I will say we are still in probably rebuild. Um, probably some practices different than others. And remember, I don't speak for all 16,000 dental practices in the country. Our network and our, I, I know our network, I know what protégés, I know what mentors, all the wonderful people in dentistry tell me. And the people that did something through the shutdown through to the opening, meaning they got prepared, they didn't think they were defeated, they moved through their frustration, they believed their success could come back, they are rebuilding and they are, I can tell you probably almost everyone I talk to now in our network is having is projecting the best year of their career in 2021. And as of the end of last year, the, the calendar year, they were anywhere from eight to 30% above their pre-COVID production. The challenge with the, the chat, the practices that were probably the, the, the most challenged were the large ones. The large ones where you've got 18, 20, 25, 30 employees, and you're working to get all these protocols and really truly every day was different and every day was different. So the rebuild involved catch up, massive communication, and how do we conquer COVID? How do we conquer COVID? We conquered being never being called elective again. We conquered net, we're essential. Um, this, you know, all these different lockdowns don't worry us as much because they are not shutting us down. They're not mandating or forcing us to and calling us um, an optional service. So I think what does this have to do with anything is their patient's experience in COVID has definitely changed. And whether it's gonna stay like this or whether it's gonna go back to some sort of what we're used to, I can tell you the people that are the most stuck in dentistry are the ones that are hoping we'll go back to the way it was. And I don't believe we will. I don't mean we'll never see a human. I'm a big hugger. I don't mean we won't be able to touch. We won't be able to be in rooms together like Dr. Yosef was talking about as far as our learning environment. But if you look at how do you, what is truly being pandemic proof? And we're all in this together. And I started, I started COVID on April 1st saying, you know, if we're all in the same boat, and there's a hole in the boat. It doesn't matter what end of the boat the, the hole's in. We're all either going down together or we're all going to survive together. I am extremely proud of the resiliency of dentistry and what they've done to grow, to learn, to use their intellect, to use what they were doing before and to adapt. And if you're in a place where you're not, you're not getting back to where you were before COVID, there's going to be some pretty straightforward explanations, not about a past we can't change, but things that you could do right now. And patients are concerned about, I mean, what do the, I mean, without patients, we have no dentistry. We have no specialty. We have no services to provide. But if you look, patients still, even they, they, they impacted this before COVID, they impact this more. These are the five key areas, not only as a leader, but as a member of the dental team, is to ask yourself, did you gain back their loyalty? And that's based on like the, Dr. Yusuf was talking about trust. He was showing you why you should trust him. And that's Canadians demand trust. Canadians will not say yes, recommend or refer any healthcare service if they don't feel trust and they will not be loyal. They will not be loyal to that provider. So a lot of times uh, patients are moving dental practices somewhat right now, but the reason they're moving isn't because there's anything wrong. It's because they don't feel safe. And I think if anything, COVID's made the population extremely more health conscious and we, you know, to retain in general, in the general practice, patient retention is the lifeblood. The patient comes back on a particular interval through the hygiene department that's filling 80% of the doctor's schedule for restorative needs in tooth dentistry, uh, centric relation dentistry, all different kinds of major dentistry and sometimes even full mouth reconstruction. So without retention, where the lo biggest loss of productivity and income often happened was because hygiene wasn't functioning right away 
Um, even though hygiene knew how to deal with aerosols and spit and splatter. I mean, we've de been dealing with it for, for many decades. Um, case acceptance, though, what's surprising to me, and this is, this is me really showing you where are we at today. There's no point. I mean, we all lived it. We all lived it. We'll all have stories. Depends how many years we'll talk about this, how fast we can get vaccinations in this country. All of that's real. But it's interesting, a lot of practices are telling us in our, my coaching team, their case acceptance is unbelievable. And they, they're not really sure why, <laughs> but patients are saying yes to things that were, they said no to before all of this happened. So that which is measured and tracked in your business, because remember, we're a human capital business. We put the patient first, the money comes. However, that which we track and monitor to maintain our growth and profitability keeps us from being in public health or a nonprofit. So when you look at, I, and not to insult your intelligence here, you know what patients impact, but I will tell you a big, a big issue that happened is practices went, cleaned out their schedule. In Ontario, a lot of practices were down for almost 12 weeks, almost three months. So they cleaned out their schedules with patients, okay, because they weren't working. And then when they went back to re-engage, they re-engaged the schedule as they were in current time. We've got probably uh, 40 to 50% of active patients in dental practices that are not scheduled for their hygiene visit. And a lot of dentistry tells me, you know, it's because of COVID, it's not because of COVID. It's because you've not been proactive reaching out to them and explaining and giving them the knowledge and the confidence that you are one of the safest places. I, I, I truly would choose a dental office to have any procedure in healthcare before I choose anywhere else because of how safe we really are. So I guess, you know, it's not that your patients don't, that your patients are blaming you. It's just, do they know what you've done? And as Canadians, generally, I'm used to working south of the border where they're natural at this. We're not really that great at blowing our own horn and letting people know what we've been through and what we've done in our growing and our adaptation. You know, a patient can come in and see things are different because they can't walk in the door like they used to. Right. So and they have to do all these forms. I can tell you um, our partner company we work with called Recall Max has about 7 million Canadian patients in, in behaviors in their database. And I, we were we were chuckling. I said, I've never seen your confirmation, the confirmation rate in dentistry so high. And they were asking me my take on that. And I said, you know, I think, you know, you leave a message and we used to think that was a confirmation and we would put a C beside the patient. We cannot do that anymore. And I do, the, the brunt of the work has really fallen on the admin team. I don't call them front desk because that's a piece of furniture and they're very critical to your, your, your success. But when you look at the, the business team, the business team now has to be more accountable than they ever have been before. And the way they have to deal with contactless experience where they have to let the, the patient needs to let them know they're here. Did they do their COVID screening? You can't just say they're confirmed because you left a message or sent an email because you have to have their screening in less than 24 hours before the visit to honor your obligation to stay open and not be shut down by public health. You know, dentistry's probably never had so many regulatory bodies looking at us, auditing us, you know, coming in and coming in and looking at how are we handling it. And it's fascinating, any dentist that has a public health audit or they have a COVID case where public health gets involved in contact tracing, they are passing public health audits with flying colors as long as they're following proper IPAC. And IPAC's been around for a long time. So if you're not up to date on your IPAC, don't take my word for it. That's something you want to focus on. And IPAC really is infection control procedures of your reprocessing to make sure that everything you do in your sterilization is at hospital grade. I remember teaching donning and doffing and everyone's like, what are these words? And then I had a surgeon do a demo video and then dentistry went really crazy because surgeons have been doing it their whole career. Hospital professionals have been doing it. We've adapted. 
we've adapted, we've got the room set up, the aerosols managed, the, the time between appointments. I mean, it's gone a lot of different ways on that, but here's what's most important. We know we've done this. We know what we're committed to. It's absolutely critical that your patients don't understand, they overstand. And this is, this is uh, I just work with Procter & Gamble because we work with home care aids and power toothbrushes and different things. Lots of friends and, and colleagues in dentistry. They, this was a COVID study that they did with patients. And this is what came up for patients. So, you know, before COVID, patients in Canada demanded empathy and that you were friendly. All the things actually that Alliance Dental Specialist is known for and, and their reputation and their dental team's level of showing how they care is second to none. If you, I think when you get a chance to go see them, just go watch them. Um, because you don't get, that's not awards that you you program. That's awards that you get from true, true objective sources. But what's interesting is look at what the patients are telling us now they expect from us. And this is since COVID is they want us to overcome their, their uncertainty. They want to know that they're safe. And just seeing that we're different doesn't mean they know that we're safe you're constantly going to be, and, and practices have been constantly talking about what you've done to make them safe. But you know, it's interesting, what really works the best in safety with patients is when the dental team approach is speaking about how comfortable and how grateful they are to their leader and the adaptations to make them safe. And you know, we can talk about patients all day, but if we don't make the dental auxiliary feel safe, we need them. I've never ever in 30 years heard a dentist say they would like to work with an assistant. We I've never heard anyone say that we'll put everyone that calls through to automation systems of, of uh, electronic answering. So without a dental team, we couldn't have got through this, but there was a lot of work to get them back. So they felt safe. Um, health transformation, I think de dentistry is going to be better than ever because patients are so much more health conscious. They're also more conscious of their frequency of visits. They want to do more per appointment. We'll talk about that. And where is it that they, when they're very observant, they're very savvy and very in tune. And it's interesting in dentistry that patients are now demanding anything you recommend that they use for home care or to take care of themselves to stay healthy in a pandemic is they want you to be able to offer it to them right there, like all most other service businesses do. And, you know, I think looking at what's the dynamic of the patient now, how do we meet their needs is going to keep us keep us. We rebuilt. Now we're going to grow and we're going to continue to be perceived and hygiene is more than just a cleaning. That's the number. I can't wait to, to do, to see patient surveys that come out a year or two from now, because the number one reason why Canadians said they don't show up at the general practice is because it's just a cleaning. Well, there's no cleaning being done except on every doorknob, every bathroom, every touch surface that we can think of. And they now know that. So I thought what I'd do just because our essence of time, um, is and it's evening you've all had long days in your COVID dental practices let's just look at some pearls so I had a, a conference call with all my coaches who are working with hundreds of practices across the country and I said tell me what the good is doing and what the great's doing with how they've rebuilt because I am so blown away I'm so proud of them and we are going to have growth like we've never seen but it's not going to happen by accident so they gave me some they gave me some great feedback and I think I want to start with what is perception? Perception of a patient is everything. We can think they know, we can believe they know, we can tell them one time and 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 think they got it. But it's really important to understand what is the patient's perception and to take the time to ask them. What is your perception of COVID and where it fits into your life? and where it fits into dentistry. You know, when, when dental teams say, Lisa, we don't wanna ask them anything. We just want them to do their screening. And you know what, like get here. 
it's, we're, it's the same conversation over and over and over. And you know, when someone says to me, I told them 20 times and they didn't get it, I say, tell them 21, tell them 22 times until they're absolutely overstanding how we service them in the gateway to their overall body wellness. So their perception comes from what they see and what they feel in your presence. So when Dr. Yosef talks about, you know, caring, caring is a word. It's, it's more than a word, excuse me. It's more than a word. Caring is how people feel when they come into your environment and they will stay with you. They will be loyal to you. They will even let you get away with one or two mistakes over time if they know you care about them. And in the beginning, dental teams were just so overwhelmed with the change and the new processes and the, you know, extended time and how are we going to do things? But I completely see it. We are the more efficient, we are more efficient and with efficiency comes more productive and productive doesn't always need money, but the money is a good measurement of your efficiency. If you ask any performance coach. So let's talk about what is some critical pandemic pearls. And this comes from right from Canadian dental practices um, from what are they doing? What do they feel is what they did is the most important. And I just took a combination that we could fit into the time we have tonight. I'm happy to come back again anytime because we're going to see some dynamic changes as the vaccination. I think my, you know, someone said to me, you know, your next COVID process is helping dentistry deal with vaccinations, not where to go on the scale of where they're going to get them. I believe Ontario dentist will be in an early phase, but it's what do we do about dental teams? Some want a vaccination, some won't get one. How do we tell the patient we're not, you know, you can go to that that provider, they're not vaccinated. This person is vaccinated. So we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there when the country figures out how they're going to get enough doses to be able to make it real. But truly, the team must be aligned. If the team is aligned and they st you stay in regular communication as a group and you feel safe, the patient picks up on that. And, you know, I, I say to dental teams, I say, you know, and, and my coaches do also, they say, you know, there's nothing wrong with when a patient's present saying out loud, I'm so grateful for how safe I feel. And so you can be safe in our dental practice. When you, your patients are a two way mirror reflection of the dental team. And that's been like that for many, many decades. You know, how many of you have um, the, the doctor or the provider leaves the room and the patient just starts asking questions to the dental auxiliary because they're the person like them or they go to the business team and they start asking, would you do this if you were me? Is he any good? Do you think I'll have, I'll still hurt? So I think it's never been a more important time for leaders to build their team. It's the highest burnout in dentistry is right now. And, you know, people ask me why, and I can't speak for everyone's why, but I think everyone's exhausted. I mean, COVID fatigue is going to be, I think, a new mental condition one day if we don't get through this. But if your team needs to be communicated, they need to constantly be told what you're doing to make them safe. And do they feel safe? And they must honor their PPE. You know, it's really scary right now if a dental, you know, I say to, de I say to dentistry, a patient calling you and telling you they tested positive for COVID is not what you need to worry about. You treat everyone like they're COVID. You have all the equipment, you have all the processes. Where there's a huge threat to dentistry is when an employee has COVID and it was for the first part of rebuild, three employees or more was considered an outbreak and public media information. And you all know how much the media thrives on dramatic stories. That's how, that's how they live. So um, it's the employees, you're not eating lunch together. You're keeping your PPE on all the time. You're doing, you're doing, you're not taking your bacteria home. You're following all of those things. And it's devast it's more devastating to a dental practice to have three employees test positive in a testing that they have different uh, confidence rates of false positives. 
um, because you are forced to shut down. And that's the only way we'll ever be forced to shut down again. And you know, it's often not the patient that it's often the employees that are not honoring some of the agreements and, you know, your team rooms, you know, like doctors, we might not need a waiting room. Um, we, it's social distancing is almost impossible in dentistry. So we've got protection. Social distancing outside of the clinical operatory is very difficult, but it has to be done. So please educate your team. You know, I have dentists that do X's every day in the calendar. One more day. We haven't had anyone who works here with COVID testing positive. Public health as of last week just changed the workplace. If you have two employees that test positive, you're now an outbreak shutdown on every major national news outlets, flipboards, online, you know, you've probably seen it. So-and-so practice shut down. That's not devastatingly, that's devastating in the beginning, but it's all how we handle it with our patients, even if that does happen. So please invest in communication with your team, make sure they're aligned, not only with them feeling safe. So when a patient looks them in the eye through the the mask and all the, you know, the face shields and says, do you feel safe working here? They can look at them and say, absolutely, I do. My employer has provided everything I need. We practice everything to do with COVID. We have protocols. They go into your employee wash, your, your, your patient washroom, and they see the log of how many times a day someone's disinfecting it. This is really critical because we cannot but we cannot fool a patient if we do not feel safe in our workplace even if we try to look them in the eyes and say yes they pick up on it if we feel safe we communicate that then they will model us because they're a reflection of our comfort level regular team meetings please hear me i don't mean a pizza party in the waiting room these are zoom Never before as so many people, I, I wish I would have bought stocks in Zoom, actually. <laughs> we all would have been financially set by now, but regular team meetings just means regular communication. You know, we help practices have Christmas parties. The, you know, the days of Christmas parties and going to restaurants and, you know, they'd have Zoom wine and cheese or they'd have a Zoom potluck. I, when I say Zoom, there are other, there's Microsoft Teams, there's other technology that you could use for video for video connection and the teams that are communicating outside of the office on video conferencing to say what's working, what could be working better and how can we help each other get through this? Cause we're going to get through it are the ones that have, do not have morale issues and do not have the culture and the, the, the risk of dental auxiliary, not coming back to dentistry or believing that, where they work is not the right place they should be, or the dreaded picking up the phone and just calling one of the legislative bodies to tell them that where they work is not safe. So please communicate video calls. This isn't, we can't be together right now. So you've got to get creative. Just like this, this event was probably scheduled a long time ago. My speaking events usually are scheduled out like years in advance, a year in advance. And it's interesting. I said, we don't have, we're going to do it. Actually, Alliance Dental Specialist said that. I said, I want to do it. I'm a suffocating extrovert. I would love to talk to someone. So I think continuing with what you're doing, virtual is going to be the new norm. And probably new normal will be one of the most irritating statements we've ever talked about again, but we are in the new normal right now. Constant, consistent messaging, your social media, your website with a pop-up of every single thing that you do for sterilization, for don't, you don't use IPAC with patients. That's an internal conversation of our regulations. But what is it you do to clean the treatment rooms? They see the plastic, they, they see the bathroom log. You just constantly, constantly, you know, it's no, no such thing as too much communication when you're going outbound to the people you service on making sure they feel safe. Remember, what did the patients say? They're uncertain. You get rid of their uncertainty by the repetition and it's everyone on the team saying the same thing. And then you constantly use your modes of emails, texting. I mean, 
the practices that weren't on electronic automation communication. Whew, imagine that, the, the old days of calling every single human who doesn't answer a landline because 50% of Canadians under the age of 50 don't have one anymore. They were the ones the most stressed out because they couldn't get mass messages out. But the mass message here is the safety issue, our sterilization, our commitment. You can say you're committed to sterilization. They don't buy that anymore. What do you do to protect them? We will not, we will not be letting you enter our practice until we know it's safe for you. You will not be sitting beside a stranger. You will not have magazines that 50 people have touched like in the past. And I mean, it's, it's becoming commonplace with us. Don't stop now. Keep going because they're every, every time, you know, when the variants came out, I just like someone said, why are you scratching your head? Mrs. Positive. I said, oh, cause now we have to deal with a variant from Brazil, a variant from UK. And it just makes it harder on dentistry's communication. So constantly also they need knowledge. Knowledge overcomes uncertainty and knowledge helps. Knowledge does help with uh, patients feeling more confident and, you know, continuing to talk to them about their inflammatory responses, their home care, keeping up with their hydration. You notice I didn't put hand washing on here. We're so, it, we're already doing that. This is about how do they deal with stress? What stressors has COVID caused for you in your life? Because it's going to show up in your oral health and we're committed to helping you with that. What does inflammation mean? What do you do to take care of yourself when you're at home? There's perio maintenance patients and active infection patients that went many, many months without professional care and they were left alone to do it on their, do it on their own. So you're constantly giving them the knowledge of the oral systemic link, heart disease. Uh, you know, there was 30, 40,000 cases of mouth cancer in North America last year. Don't tell me we're elective. We are essential and we're a critical part of this, but they won't know that if you don't continually express it and be confident and be passionate about your, your, you feel privileged to be able to be back in dentistry. And I, you know, I say, tell patients will never be called non-essential by the government again because they realized that was not probably the truth and we're back we're here to stay and we have two priorities the health of our team in their safety in the health of you and your safety and we are here for you longer appointments that's the other thing my coaches said is you know the days of uh, we've been teaching engineering your appointment book for 20 years blocking it out so you have evenly balanced days you don't have you know, so you can manage your busyness versus being productive. And it's interesting, patients are wanting longer appointments now. They want you to do as much as you can. That's why I was so excited to hear that Dental Alliance does root canals in one visit. That will be, that is like a golden ticket to what patients want. They don't want to keep coming back, not to mention what that, why that's good for you. The average setup and breakdown with PPE and infection control is $26.60 per visit. And if you wanna know how I figured, we figured that out, it's all, you know, the materials, the PPE, um, the not being able to reuse the gowns program, the washing of the scrubs, the service. So when a patient comes now, you block out longer appointments, especially for aerosol procedures, and they will do more per appointment as long as they understand what that means. Dentist, do more dentistry per appointment. You do less visits, more productive dentistry. Then that is also has an impact on your growth in how you measure the numbers also. What else is regular? So there's practices, there's practices doing minimum weekly outbound called COVID updates in our practice. So minimum weekly, some are doing twice a week, but it depends what, um, what, mo what mode you have. So you have email addresses, you have text messaging, you have a newsletter that you can get really nicely set up. I bet someone like Martha does probably their own newsletter because she knows how to do graphics. This doesn't have to be a huge cost thing. This is a strategic plan of communicating with the people who feed us who we need to come here to visit 
to have a healthy dental practice. So regular updates, I'm going to say even now, even now, you know, we're into 42, 43 weeks is every week, you know, practices. I do, I do a newsletter called Tuesdays with transitions. We didn't do it for a while because we were so in COVID support, but you know, every Monday the patient looks to, wow, my dental practice is sending me an outbound update on what's changed in COVID, if anything, and you tell them the same thing over and over again. Here's what we do to protect you. Here's what's going to be different when you arrive. Here's what we need you to do for your screening forms. And probably a little bit of the irritation comes with the repetition. But remember, you're saying the same thing 50 times a day, but not to the same person. Okay, so it's only us that feels so add some spice to it, change the words. What have we done this week? You know, what is what is it we've learned about COVID? And there's some science, some big science coming out. I think it started it's starting in the UK. The World Health Organization is going to get a hold of it. But there's huge science coming out that's going to link COVID to oral health. And it's starting. So read your journals. You can do your own research on this. Dentistry does not lack intellect as far as being able to deal with the science and the in the in the, the research. So constantly, constantly communicating and showing your patients that you're grateful for their loyalty. Thank you for running the course with us as our patient we value. We are committed to doing any everything and anything to protect us and to protect you. These COVID screening forms, if you're still using paper, there are so many companies that put the ignited and got us in automation. Automate, automate, automate. The tasks will help your annoyance with the repetition so that you can focus on the patient care and you can focus on the communication. You can focus on when they're there visiting. We might have lots of barriers. We can't walk out, shake their hand and give them a big hug. <laughs> that won't be for a while. But automating your COVID screening forms because business teams are really, really getting stressed out about the work that's going into confirming and reminding um, because they have to talk to the patient. They have to have a connection and a feedback of the patient. Either it's agreeing to the visit or it's also sending in their COVID screening forms. You know, they know you're different. You shine the temperature gauge, you make them wait outside. You got a big stop sign on your door. You buzz them in. You know, text us when you're in your car and minus 10, that's kind of hard. It's, you know, the, it's been a mild winter, but now with this cold weather, practices are telling us patients are, you know, they, they don't want to sit in their car with it running. You've got to stay on time. And COVID has made us efficient in having to stay on time. People aren't waiting like they used to, believe it or not. And it's not because everyone put 30 minutes between each visit. That's going to hurt us in our productivity perspective. So automating everything you can. There's automated virtual parking lots where you can have programs that it shows it shows when the patients got here, uh, arrived. They're in the virtual parking lot and it's not it's texting back and forth where Sally's having to use her personal phone. So get on automation softwares. Practice management systems aren't always doing this. That's more add-ons like we call Max, Care Crew. There's all kinds of them. Uh, Zebra with patient news. Um, and here's something that my coaches said, if, if I made them pick one thing that's having a massive impact on new patients, because you all want new patients, <laughs> is their new patient interview that used to be done when we took them into a consult room, we sat knee to knee and we interviewed them, explained what was going to happen in the visit, told them about our practice. That's all being done as a video call right now. So think of, they said this, they, they said the cancellation rate of the first visit is basically nil. And we're talking, we work with hundreds of practices. So it's basically nil on the new patient interview because they're doing the treatment coordinator or someone that de dealt with the new patients prior, they're doing a video Zoom call. So when the patient calls to schedule or they're scheduling them, they tell them in preparation for your visit, we will be sending you a link for you to do a video call with us so we can prepare you for when you get here. And I, I, I went, wow, it's amazing how creative we can be in dentistry. And doing that, that video call with the new patient, 
And oftentimes they said when they're doing the video call with the new patient, there's other family members that can hear it, just like we do when our kids are all being taught on computers at home. And that other family members are getting engaged and saying, you know what, I'm going to come with you. They're doing some interesting things there. Or, you know, you know, a, a wife says, my husband doesn't want to come to the dentist till this is all over. But now that I tell him everything you're doing, I show him this message. I think he'll be okay with this. With new patients, new patients is more than a phone call, not just voice. You have connection and rapport of 10 to 20% to build trust and confidence in a relationship when we can see each other. I wish I could see all of you and I was Tony Robbins with big 50 inch zooms of thousands of people, but that's not gonna be, that's not conducive. But a new patient interview video call, you get all the information, you do their medical history, you can do their dental history, you can do their behavioral interview. What's important to you about a new dental practice? What can we do to, to meet your expectations? What is our, where does oral health fit in your life? It's, they, they, they wouldn't stop talking about this being one of the top three greatest things for new patient experience being done by all dental practices. What's another pandemic pearl is social media posts, social media posts, but not, there's, there's communication of knowledge, there's communication of blow your own horn of what you've done to invest in sterilization and safety to make them less uncertain. The social media posts are social media posts of patients who are actually in your practice that you send out to your other patients that are a little, that have trepidation or maybe not calling you back or maybe overdue that see, wow, there are people that are going there and they look happy and they're doing everything they're supposed to. So your social media posts being, you know, one practice made these signs, my hygienist rocks, or I love my dentist. And they, they take a picture of the patient holding that, they put it on their Facebook, they put it on their Instagram. And I think every, any practice before this that wasn't up to speed on a website, a digital footprint, some social media and to have email ability to email are have really really struggled because all they had was a telephone okay so i i will say those that weren't they are now because if this ever happened again what's something that's coming back as the the most popular the the most well received is when the dentist your the dentist themselves get someone to videotape a from the heart message of what patients mean to them. You don't have to make this complicated. You don't need special lighting. You don't need to bring in a film crew and PPE, but you know, the patient connects with the doctor. The patient knows the team. The patient asks the team all the validation. But when is the last time you as the leader and the owner did it, the patient got to see you sitting, sitting and speaking? It doesn't, you don't have to be a professional speaker. You don't have to script it. I think don't, you're, some dentists that want to do this that aren't are overthinking it. It's two minutes, one and a half to two minutes. And you do those on a basis saying, hello, patients, dear patient, it's Dr. Lisa Philp. I want to just, I miss you if you haven't been here. I want to just let you know what's happening. We're going to get through this. Dentistry's come a long way. Whatever it is you want to say, they want to connect with you and know that you're okay so that, that when they come, they will be okay. So you can look, you can look on the internet. There's lots of examples. I mean, if you go on our website to our COVID survival section, we put anything that's been done by dentistry in Canada in COVID, and it's something that's worth duplicating. Our network loves to share with the rest of the profession. They're, they're, they're good that way. You can see examples. Please don't sit back and say COVID is the reason why you're not growing because it's not, it's going to be an excuse, not a reason because there's going, dentistry showing that that's not the case. Are things different? Absolutely. Teledentistry, teledentistry was, became extremely popular. There's different platforms. Um, I just had a prescription renewal and my doctor wouldn't renew it until we did a video conference and it wasn't really a video conference it was a it was a it was a telemedical appointment where 
I had to go have my blood pressure taken, email it to the practice. They put it on this video call um, and just things you do to get prescriptions renewed. And that did, that my medical doctor hasn't been on site in that family practice for five months. I didn't ask about all the other people because I'm not sick. Um, but teledentistry is, it, teledentistry, remember a lot of these things we learned through COVID that made us better, that made us more communicative, that made us easy to easier to access are going to stay. They're not going to be done. We're not going to say, oh, COVID's cured. Uh, we, all the stuff we did goes away. Now you might take the plastic off the rooms and you might not have to do the bathroom log and sterilize a bat patient bathroom every 12 minutes or whatever. But this, I think, I believe is going to stay. And this is an amazing way to handle emergency patients. And for decades, dentistry, general dentist practice, you know, endodontists like emergencies because <laughs> that's what, I mean, that's what they're treating. But general dentistry is always complained. Dentistries are disrupt, uh, emergencies are disruptive. They're same day. They're always put in at prime time when they're seeing other patients. So, this is a great way to have be able to do emergency care using teledentistry. It doesn't mean they don't come see you, but you also can do teledentistry with anyone that's showing symptoms. So I guess in the last couple of weeks, my coaches said they're starting to be patients call mainly because of Ontario's lockdown, not so much in BC, um, Alberta's starting to open back up, but in Ontario, and they're saying, you know, I have a runny nose, it's probably not good for me to come, or they're saying I have a symptom. And it's interesting, what if you could say to them, that's okay, let's get you and schedule you into a video teledentistry call to make sure nothing's happening in your mouth, and then we'll schedule your appointment. There is a code and a fee in our fee guide for teledentistry for dentists that's quite lucrative. And it doesn't have to disrupt the flow of the in-person care they're doing with pre-booked patients, that were pr scheduled prior that we have to disrupt and we have to irritate because we can't get to them on time. Case acceptance. So when I was digging deeper into why is case, why are dentists saying patients case acceptance is a lot better. They're saying yes to uh, the crown. They've been told they're going to watch forever and virtual consults, you know, dentistry, get, dentistry's biggest disease is busyness syndrome. We get busy, we get, you know, all these patients coming in and a doctor's expected to leave a major procedure in one room, go to hygiene so that they can not only build a relationship with the patient, but the hygienist can prompt them through the data of the exam so that we can look at previous dentistry and we can look at newly diagnosed dentistry and they're rushed in their treatment planning. And there's sometimes patients need much more than just a filling. And dentists not being rushed into the complete care process of diagnosis, taking the time to plan for a virtual consultation with a patient and their spouse sitting at their kitchen table with a very simple step-by-step -step process, virtual consults are causing higher case acceptance. You think about it, you have a patient that comes in, what do they say? They say, can you send a predetermination, see if it's covered, I'll call you back. Do we ever hear from them? Or you present the eloquent treatment plan is best for their oral health to treat the conditions in their mouth. And they say, I have to ask my husband. When you go into their own home, please don't critique their kitchen cupboards, their decor, and tell them things about the environment. What I do, what I do recommend is you ask them to please find as quiet of area as you can find with everyone in your home. And, um, a quiet area and anyone else that's going to be involved in the decisions they make about their dentistry is welcome to attend. There's some dentists that tell me that they've had family of five sitting there because they're just so intrigued that their dentist is on their, their parents' computer talking about dentistry. This, I believe, and, and this, this takes a little bit of setup, but this forces dentists to prep to do complete care as opposed to just one tooth at a time running in and out of hygiene in a two to three minute exam. So please, again, what you do with this is gonna be completely up to you. I'm calling these pandemic pearls because this is what the successful is doing. And my mentors always taught me, if you wanna be successful, 
go where successful people have been, do what successful people are doing. And that's where you're going to learn and be able to make it yours, take the best, change the rest, customize it to your unique needs. And you, it's a choice. It's a choice to be able to do this. So virtual consultations and, you know, there's, there's all, remember, there's more to this than me that I can talk about in an hour. You've got some electronic record transfer, you know, even using, um, even using uh, electronic record transfers for referring doctors. I don't think we'll ever see a piece of paper for referrals go back and forth again, or especially practices that are digital because they can communicate with their referring doctors and patients, especially our older patients love when professionals collaborate like that about them. And you know that Alliance knows that from take from the privilege of you giving them the referrals and also them sending back the communication. We're, we're more efficient. We're more efficient. Whether virtual is going to take over our life, it's probably here to stay. It's probably here to stay because now people are used to it. When you look at a, I look at my high school, my third born high school student, I say, you know, how do you sit there? And she says, mom, the, the worst is I have gym class starting this week. I go, how do you do physical education in, our, in your bedroom on virtually? She says, well, we kind of sit there and watch everyone dribble the basketball for three hours that got to go to school that day. But it's OK. They have to do the same when we go. I'm like, wow, that needs to change. We need to get some mental health back with our teenagers and with our children to get back into the social environment of school. There's no question about that. Every parent would agree. Um, I don't think any parent planned on being home. They're working at home. I mean, some houses, some houses have four to five people all trying to do what they need to do in the same environment. So it is time to get out of our houses, but it doesn't mean you know, I had the national banks tell me they're not going to probably open back up to their corporate offices for at least a year. All these large companies are saying, we've now figured out how to do this work at home. Why not present their ideal oral health care services and your technical giftedness with pictures and visuals in their own home? They're saying yes more. That's what the successful will tell us. Prompting the doctor out loud in front of the uh, patient in a hygiene exam. We've taught this for years, but this is really, really working. You can still go and do hygiene, uh, hygiene checks. You know, hygiene checks we have to do. And, you know, nine out of 10 gentle dentists tell me the biggest stressor in their day is hygiene exams and emergencies. Hygiene exams are a necessary evil. If the doctor doesn't go to hygiene, not only do they not get to build rapport and, and trust with their patient because the patients want to see them too, but they also don't get to revisit dentistry that's been previously diagnosed. So when I say out loud, this doesn't mean whisper outside of the room through face masks and N95s. And most of you have learned how to whisper in a steel mill. The patient hears you. This is There's a system of when the doctor enters a hygiene room that the hygienist prompts them through the personal, the medical, the dental history, confirms that they've had their COVID screening and passed it. They walk them through the restorative examination quadrant by quadrant. Doctor, beginning in the upper right, could you please assess the large filling? Doctor, moving to the upper front teeth, Lisa has expressed that she really thinks that she wants to have whiter teeth. She spent a lot of time during this pandemic looking at herself and she doesn't like the color of her teeth. The hygienist prompting the doctor out loud about the patient in front of the patient makes the hygiene exam that much more impactful. And when Canadians were asked before the pandemic, what do they watch the most when they're in a dental practice for their perception, they said two things, how they're greeted on the phone and how the exam transfer happens between a doctor and their team. So let's build on it. Let's let's listen to them. Let's hear them and let's meet their needs and let's involve them in their care. You know, when you walk into an exam and you say, you have to do this, you need to do this, you should do this, watch this till it breaks, that's okay, observe it till it dies. That's all, that's all things dentistry. I mean, diagnostic philosophy is probably one of the biggest differences between different practitioners. But now you don't have to prejudge a patient. You don't have to say, oh, are they going to be freaked out because this is so expensive? 
Should I not tell them everything in complete care? The standard of care in dentistry is every human deserves the right morally and ethically to know what are the conditions in their gum, their teeth, their jaw joint, and their smile, and what can we provide and recommend to solve that? This is the perfect time to do all the things that you weren't doing in your busyness world to look at this and say, this is going to grow us. This is, these are, these are, and I can tell you practice management systems haven't changed. Uh, we've been servicing Canadian dentistry for 20 years. I can tell you the morning huddle in dentistry, which increases a practice's top line by 10% by the team coming together to plan for their day is 50 years old. I will say it's exciting to see things that we have been working with select clients who wanted to invest in themselves to be better. Finally, COVID's forcing dentistry to do it, but they don't look at it as being forced. They look at it as, wow, this is, I mean, this is something we, we need to do to keep our patients loyal, retention, feeling safe and certain about us. But when they're doing it, they'll never go back because they see the results and they hear the feedback, they read the patient surveys. Every time a patient leaves your practice, you can email them a quick three to minute, three, three question survey. Patients are filling out surveys at a, a response rate two to three times they ever did before this pandemic. Change your questions. How did you feel we handled COVID-19 and your safety? Rate it one to 10. Patient surveys are what fill your buckets when you're having a hard day, but also tell you their perception of what they might. An unhappy patient will tell 21 people in two hours after they leave an experience. And now we have the internet. Some of them even take the time uh, to take the time to do a permanent record of their dis of their dissatisfaction. So it's not about the patient's always right. Because if the patient's always right, that means you're always wrong. And I don't know anyone that wants to go into a workplace to feel wrong day after day, person after person. But the patient is always valid. Their perception of how they see you and how they feel in your presence is real. Ask them how you did and duplicate it. That's our golden ticket. That's what. That's how we're gonna keep people coming back to the dentist. So I challenge you, Martha, I think we're doing pretty good for time. We, I, we have time for any questions. I, I can answer anything that anyone would like to answer. We went through this relatively quickly, or if anyone would like to share something they're doing, something they're doing that's working to share with others. Hi, Lisa. So it looks like we do have a couple of questions here. Um, the first one is, uh, don't patients get bothered by receiving the same info? Uh, they don't like to be, uh, inundated by so much stuff. Well, I am going to say as, uh, adult educator, as a trainer, it takes the average adult 21 times to hear something before they retain it. And there's never, you know, if they say to you, I'm good, I get it. I say, tell me what it is you were, tell me what it is you heard from what I just explained to you and they feed it back and it connects. Yes, you don't keep doing it, insulting their intelligence, right? But it's our stuff that we think they don't want to hear it again. Because if you, at, if you survey them or they, you know, they go to a different room and the dental assistant says, what questions do you have? Do you have any questions about what was just explained? They have a list of them. The person that told them thinks they got it. Not everyone gets it. I mean, listening goes against all human nature, right? So I'm going to say, if they tell you they've got it and they can feed it back to you that they've got it and they say, I understand Here's my COVID screening. You know, we could use examples, but they never, you know, how many times the patient came in and the chart says for 17 years, told them about periodontal disease. They come in and they look at you and they go, I don't know what you're talking about. Right? So uh, yeah. whether they're acting clueless to challenge you or whether they really didn't get it, I'd love to tell you they remember everything you say. They do not 
their, their attention spans equivalent, an adult attention spans equivalent to a third grader of about three to five minutes. What do we do in dentistry? Oftentimes we just keep talking. So if you're, if you want to go a different way with that in your communication skills, ask them as opposed to tell them, you could say, what have you heard about what we do at Alliance Dental Specialist to keep you safe? They go, I haven't heard anything. Or, oh, I think you sent me a couple of thousand emails, but I didn't really read them. Or I know you do this, you have foggers and this thing you spray everywhere and you closed your rooms and you make sure that you write everything down and how you on, on what the temperature of your, your machine is that you sterilize. You don't keep going. But don't assume they get it because you spoke it. It's a, big, it's a big breakdown in communication in healthcare. If they if they get it, get them to feed it back to you, then you don't have to repeat it. If you want to know, if you think that you feel like you're being annoying because you're saying it over and over, ask them, what else can I tell you? Or what is it that you believe you heard? Because I don't want to insult your intelligence. It's our stuff because we say it so many times. And think about it. By five o'clock, Martha, I'm sure you guys at your office just go, okay, I'm going home. I'm never saying the word COVID again. <laughs> yeah. Right? So oh, yeah. remember, you're with different people all day. If that was you and your husband all day and you said 150 times how to explain the safety of COVID, yes, but you're not saying the same thing to the same person. No. So let people. your own stuff stop you. If they didn't get it, tell them again. Yes. Okay. okay and we have another question here. Um, what about older, an older, older patients that don't have technology or don't know how to do it? Yeah. Okay. So here's what I'm going to say. You're right. It's generation. Technology is generational, right? Martha, like us figuring out zoom and a zoom background and, you know, and how we deal with this, there's going to be different generations that adapt to technology easier. But you know, it's interesting. Think about it. Even 70, my, I mean, 75 year olds still, they do use technology. And if you asked a traditionalist, why are you, you know, why do you have a smartphone? They would tell you because they've never talked to their grandchildren, for instance, right? But I just heard on the radio today, the government is launching vaccinations with an online portal and they're starting with 80 year olds. Oh, wow. So there's not going to, no 80 year olds going to be able to call Sally at public health and go, honey, where do I get my vaccination? Right. Everything's being done in an online portal. So if they have challenges with technology, guess what you do to show you care? Teach them. Teach them. There's going to be this thing called an email. You know that Gmail. Like, don't don't be afraid to teach them because the more you teach them to adapt, they're having to adapt everywhere. Right? When you've got an 82 year old, uh, an 82 year old say, "I love this Netflix." Did you see Yellowstone? <laughs> <laughs> oh. so don't assume old people are, are aren't smart with technology they can learn it i mean you know they still might have their flip phone and they don't text and do they send the same amount of text messages does an 80 year old send the same amount of text messages a day as a 30 year old no that's never going to be the comparison but if they don't know it help them and think about it, if they want to protect themselves at the highest risk group from this virus, they have to figure out how to do it online. Right. No one's going to, no one's going to be there to talk to them. We couldn't get them distributed. Right. If we, if, if that was the case. Great question though. Well, uh, I don't know if you guys can hear me. I, uh, very impressed with the presentation. And uh, one thing that I have to say that we learned in COVID during the initial uh, months of the pandemic, like you said before, it is important to maintain uh, communication with the public. And what we did in our office is we were um, sending newsletters on a, on a biweekly basis on the protocols that we instituted in our office. So our referring dentist uh, knew what we were doing 
and what we were recommending because there were no guidelines. We were talking about follow times. We were talking about, you know, what uh, system, the HVAC, uh, how, to, how to deal with, with uh, the procedures. And, and at, at, at that point in time, we were over-masking and in fact, at one point in, in time, LA, big filters in the room. <laughs> we were we were actually. I started. Um, I I designed a device on, with a scuba diving mask with a filter, and uh, and and that's what I was okay. going to use going to you know to Costco or going anywhere, because we just did not know what we were dealing with. Like you said before, the protocols are there. We just need to follow the protocols. And we need to inform the public about the protocols. We have definitely become way more productive now. We are servicing more patients. We, uh, we've been doing one sitting endo for a long, long time. But now um, we are uh, talking to the patients. The ladies are speaking to the patients so that we already know ahead of time if there is a concern what is it that they need from us ahead of time so we're not wasting time the patient's time is very valuable so yeah. instead of having to come two three appointments they come for one appointment we don't do that with every single patient because certain cases are are are, are more difficult than others but the silver lining is that we have become more efficient patients don't have to wait too long they come in straight into the operatories, they feel safe. And what you said is extremely important. Our staff members need to feel safe. And one of the things that we did in the beginning, uh, myself included, is I wanted to make sure that the, the, the staff members felt that whatever we were doing, even though there were no protocols, uh, you know, RCDS said do protocols, but they never gave us uh, straight guidelines on what to do. Uh, we the first thing we did is we put this huge extractor uh, to extract the air from our office. It takes six minutes for us to remove the entire air from our our office. And we bought the HEPA filters. We did not. I looked at the different HEPA filters, and you don't really need to go to a medical grade HEPA filter. Your your regular uh, 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 the, what is the machine that I have? I have it right here. Is uh, uh, what brand is it? Uh, Bicell. The Bicell 400 has the same HEPA filtration that a medical grade. So you don't have to spend thousands of dollars. You 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 do it. You make sure that your patients understand what you're doing. Our follow times are you know four minutes now because of what we have uh, and. As long as you let people know, so we educated our, our referral base, and I think our referral base was pretty happy because for three or four months they were not open, so we were generating newsletters. Uh, having patients feel safe, having our staff members feel safe, all our staff members feel very safe. There is, some are doing more than others as far as what they do, or or they were double masking, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But, you know, we're going to get through this thing and we're going to be fine. And like I said before, our production has gone up. We'll become more efficient. And I appreciate you mentioning that because it's extremely important. So thank you for mentioning that because we need to make sure that our, ourselves and our staff members feel safe. Yeah. And, anyway, and the patients will follow of because... Course. You know, any, it, any Anything it, else that you have, uh, Martha, that you, any other questions that you'd like to add or... Uh, or anything else? No, well, I think that's that's it. As far as questions, we had those two questions. Um, and but... remember the rules of change. If it's working, do more. If it's not working, do something different. And if you are not on a path to grow big, to a top line, larger than pre-COVID, there's things you can do to change that. Because you know, people are doing it. Absolutely. If this is not an experiment, right? We're not shut down. No, no. Well, Lisa, change. If you don't know if it works or not, find someone smart and find out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember when this started, I got a lot of because we were doing a lot of uh, staff online. 
I had uh, I, I was asked by several uh, endodontic associations, particularly from South America, because uh, I speak Spanish. They asked me, like after two weeks, to give a, a COVID lecture and how we were dealing with COVID. And I said, I'm not an expert. I, I, I'm just trying to do what makes sense. And I did give a lecture. And, you know, what we're doing in addition to taking temperatures, we're taking oxygen saturation levels because we wow. feel that there is no patients who, who are walking around with uh, below oxygen saturation uh, levels that are that are right, like anything under 90, we are not going to treat that patient. We're going to tell them your saturation level is too low. You may have an issue. You have to go on and check yourself. We haven't had a patient yet under 90, but we looked at different things. We were gowning all our patients. Now we don't gown every single patient, but we're learning. And it's been a learning experience. And, and, and we we find that we're doing very, very well, and a, a lot of dentists are doing very, very well. Like you said, they're busy. Uh, I think there's been a lot of misinformation. I know a lot of our referring dentists are concerned about particularly the hygiene uh, part of their businesses, where uh, sometimes uh, the, the, the RCDS has a certain type of rules, and the Hygienist Association uh, or their college has different type of rules. And, and it's becoming a problem. And we, we, it, it, it's something that I don't, I don't know if you want to address briefly, because you're probably familiar with, with what is being happening. Oh, I happening. was part of it. Um, I was, yeah, that was probably out of the whole COVID survival. The hardest part was the colleges being on different pages, coming like totally like this far apart. And you can't have general dentists and hygienists not be collaborative. That's what makes the general practice, right? So I think the and the hygienists are afraid I'm going to get in trouble. You know, you know, you know what it is. The hygiene college addresses hygienists like they're entrepreneurs in charge of a business, and they're not. Right? The dentist is the entrepreneur. So the practices that worked it out. You know, the practices that worked it out. A big thing is if you can't get PPE, no, I don't know any dentist that said, get in here and work. I have no mat and 95. So right. Like no one, no dentist would force someone to work. But I think that the dissension between dentists and hygienist was caused by conflicting regulatory bodies, not the government, not public health, the conflicting regulatory bodies and the months it took them to even get close it, it could have it could have ruined us it could have if we didn't overcome it yeah, yeah you're right it could have ruined us because hygiene feeds dentists yeah yeah dentist yeah, I, I, I still hear it, i still hear it from my referring dentist there's a still having a major issue even though they they they, they have everything in place uh, and and the hygienists either don't feel safe or or they feel that the rules that their college has imposed have not been followed the way they should. And, you know, I don't have hygiene in my office, but, yeah, uh, we, we you know, we, we, we are, uh, but I can, I can feel the pain and, and I can, uh, patients, you know, the, the, the dentists are concerned about that and a lot of hygienists also, you know, the government also, took a, a, a view of uh, a lot of people did not want to come back to work because they were making more money staying at home too. But that's, that's, a, that's another subject altogether. And um, we, we had to be very creative so people would come into work and maybe not work as many days as they were working, but we had to guarantee a certain salary in order for people to come back to work because we needed people to come back to work. And you become creative, and 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 then you're busy because you need to service the public. And as an endodontic practice, we we had emergencies. But some days we would only see one or two patients because people didn't even know we were open, even though we we made sure, and we were only treating patients with acute acute pain. But I'm not going to take more of your time. Uh, uh, Elisa, Thank you for having me. I, I really appreciate this. This was very informative. 
thank you so much and hopefully we'll have you back again uh, and hopefully in person but if not in person this uh, zoom meetings I, I guess have becoming extremely popular and i like to uh, thank martha for putting this together thank you martha and i like to thank all of you for attending and uh, we are going to also put this on facebook um, probably within the next couple of days and we'll let everybody know about it and again this was great and uh, we'll see you in uh, either cyberspace or in 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 in, in, in or, or, or when we're getting vaccinated and we, and we would love to actually i'm getting the second my second dose uh, those uh, my, my vaccine on Sunday it was it, it, it was supposed to happen two Sundays ago but of course you know we ran out of vaccine so but I'm lucky enough that I'm on staff at the Oakville Trafalgar Memorial uh, Hospital and I got my first dose about a, five weeks ago and I'm getting my second one this Sunday in the morning so I'm happy about that that's uh, awesome. I'll come hug you. You'll I, be someone I, I, I can hug. I haven't, I, I haven't <laughs> developed any autism. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm okay. And, and, and thank you so much. And for those of you who have attended, Martha is going to be sending you a certificate for attending the, 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 the meeting. And Lisa, again, it's a pleasure. And thank you so much. Good thank night. You. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night to everyone. Thank you all for who's attended. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, it's Martha at AllianceDS.com, or you could even email the office and they'll forward it to me at endo at AllianceDS.com. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.